Hey, everybody. Welcome to Latter-day Lesbian, a podcast about an ex-Mormon gay girl just trying to figure out her life. Yep. I mean, last week, I, I think I had you figuring it out. And this week, I've gone back to trying to figure it out for some reason. Yeah, I, I decided I hadn't figured it out yet, and I'm just going to try again this week. Okay, maybe every week. Mm-hmm. I Between, think I can. I think I can. <laughs> Between episode 30 and episode 31, I realized I had not figured it out yet. So let's keep going. Oh, okay. Well, you know, it's really going to be okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm just living in the moment over here. Good for you. Mm-hmm. I don't think about tomorrow. Mm-mm. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, do. I kind of think about tomorrow. But maybe I don't think about a month from now. I do. Oh, wow, you got it all mapped out? (laughs) (laughs) I'm a dreamer. That is true about you. (laughs) Anyway, I'm Mary. And I'm Shelly. Yep, that's true. What are we talking about today, Well, it was our birthday weekends last weekend. Oh, yeah. How did you forget already? Uh, You know, I've moved on. You you turned (laughs) hell of old. Hey, How could you forget that? (laughs) I hit the big four, five, 45 years old. Are we really talking about ages right now? I am. I mean, I'm not going to talk about your age, 53, but I'm going to talk about mine. (laughs) Leave that in, Dan. Leave that in. (laughs) Man, that was not consensual, that age revelation. What are you talking about? (laughs) I I don't remember. Uh Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Well, wow. you Thanks. have the under boob of a 25 year old. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. And we're off. <laughs> You're welcome, everybody. Yeah. Anyway, for our weekend, we went, we got to do a little getaway. Yeah. I think it's pretty awesome that we share a birthday. Well, this past time was on a weekend, but I just think it's pretty cool that our birthdays are two days apart. Who yeah. Knew? So we have, we just, we've just decided from now until eternity, we will spend. That grouping of days together. There's three total. Yep. It makes a group. <laughs> Is that some or a few? Uh, <laughs> or a group. Are you getting mathy on me? Is I don't know. Is it a know. pod of birthdays? It's a gaggle. A gaggle? Okay. Or murder. It's a pride of oh, birthdays. I like, okay. I like that. You like, I like that, that one? Mm-hmm. All right. We're off track already. Well, I was talking about what we did last oh, weekend. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sure. Let's talk about we it. We relaxed. We, yep. um, my lovely Mary rented Aww. a cute little cottage on the bay. I did. Chesapeake Bay. Chesapeake Bay. Mm-hmm. We laid in the sun. We read that book, um, Educated. Educated. Ooh. Really good. As soon as we finish reading it, I'm going to try to track down the author and we're going to talk to her because that's a damn Ooh, good book. I recommend that. Okay. We'll see, yeah. we'll see what we can do. And we did a lot of podcasting stuff also. For some reason, we realized that when we go on vacation, we cannot leave work at home mm-hmm. because with a podcast, there is no rest for the wicked. No, we're in this unfortunate position of always catching up and releasing it the same week we record it, which ideally would be better to have a few in the can, so to speak, Mm -hmm. so that we could potentially take a vacation and not have to worry about the podcast. So it'll be scheduled and ready to go. That's the nice thing about Anchor. And maybe other podcasting apps or Mm -hmm. providers are are similar in that you can schedule it for the future. Oh. Yeah, it's pretty cool. You know what else we did last weekend? What did we do? We watched probably one of the stupidest, worst movies ever. It was a different time. It sucked. It was the 90s. I've seen better movies in the 90s by a lot. <laughs> so it was called, um, what was it called? Sliding Doors. Uh-huh. I like Gwyneth Paltrow. Except for in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> so we're flipping through. For some reason, the cottage we were staying at, the, um, the TV system. Well, it only well, had like Roku. It, it didn't even have channels. Roku. No, I it thought did, it did. It, well, it didn't have the Roku channel, which shows modern things. It had <laughs> modern like modern things, like Roku 1991. I don't know. I'm making like up names. Corn or something. Yeah, it sucked. It sucked bad. <laughs> As I'm flipping through these movies, that I'm, I'm like, I never even heard of this. And then Mary goes, "Ooh, ooh, is that Sliding Doors? I've always wanted to see that. I've heard it's great." I'm well, like, okay, okay. I heard that like in 1993. Well, who told you? You need to unfriend <laughs> them because it sucks. And by the way, if you're listening, you're like, "Well, I really liked it." Go back. Watch it again. <laughs> anyway, it sucked. It, it wasn't great. No. But the weather was beautiful. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Peaceful and quiet. Mm-hmm. Um, Mary found a turtle. That was fun. I, um, I posed with it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I wanted to kind of put my arm around it, but I thought that would be imposing. It might have snapped the shit out <laughs> of your have. finger or something. That would have been great. <laughs> anyway, yeah. good time. Highly recommend everyone just take some time away to just breathe and relax and try yep. not to worry about life. It was It was great. It was. Mm-hmm. Yep, we had a beautiful view of the water, which mm-hmm. is my favorite thing in the entire world. Mm-hmm. 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 Uh, besides favorite. you. Thank you. Uh-huh. <laughs> and the podcast. Oh, yeah. And all our listeners. Uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. It's my 50,000th favorite thing. Yes. <laughs> Speaking of all our listeners, 
we put forth a challenge on Facebook to help us reach 100 patrons on our Patreon page. So mm-hmm. this, this is supporters of our podcast. Correct. We put that out there and what do you know? We got it. We sure did. We sure did. So thank you so much to everyone who was like, yeah, I'll support that. I listen. I think it's good content. I'll support it. Mm-hmm, I'll mm-hmm. go check out www.patreon.com <laughs> slash Latter Day Lesbian. Mm-hmm. And sign <laughs> and up. I, and I will look through the tiers and I'll pick one that I like. And I will sign up and I will feel good that I'm supporting something that I listen to. And I might get some bonus episodes and things as well for depending on what tier I sign up for. Yeah. So could be. Can I now announce the new patrons? Yeah, but. As the reward, you read aloud or on video. You you mm-hmm. used your phone yep. and you videotaped yourself reading your patriarchal blessing. Yes, and ripping it apart. Oh, that should be good. I mean, some of it are apart. Some of it it's just boring. Some of it's like, wow, I cannot believe all the manipulation wrapped under this thing. So hopefully, you guys have all watched that video at this point. By the time this comes out, that will be already released. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I haven't seen it, but by the time this video comes out, I will have. True, true, true. Or not this video. I haven't even I'm posted so- it yet. Confused right now <laughs> in real time. What's happening? Listen, what are we doing? if you're listening, just know that you can go watch the video if you're a patron. We're going to have it available for all patrons to watch, regardless, regardless of, tier of your level. tier. Yes, yes, because that is a reward for yeah. all the patrons. Yes, yes, and as an additional reward for everyone who listens who is not yet a patron either, I posted a picture of cute little me in my Shirley Temple hair. Mm-hmm. With a super scratchy, gross dress that I hated, posing with my brothers. Now, is that that's on Facebook? Is it also on Patreon? Where'd no. You, where'd you put Let's that? Let's throw it up there. Okay. I put it on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. And now it's going to be on Patreon after this discussion. Mm-hmm. There you go. There you go. And, um, well, I guess I'm a little premature. Before we read the new patrons for the week, I was going to say, if you would like to be a supporter of this podcast, please visit No W's Needed, <sighs> patreon.com slash Latter Day Lesbian to sign up. And don't forget, month of June, Pride Month. Yes. Anyone who signs up who's new signs up for the $3 tier in the month of June will get all of the $6 per month benefits for the month of June. So mm-hmm. just a little reminder. I know we've talked about that, but it's just a little reminder. Yep, there you go. So who are our new patrons, shall we? Okay, we we had a good week. And so thank you. We reached our goal of five and then some. So that's our goal every week is to get five new people. And so far, we've only had one week where we didn't make it. And that was the week that I cried. Um, Yeah, I thought we were going to lose her. (laughs) (laughs) It was a little sad. It was a sad week. Yeah, I felt like nobody liked me. Oh, my goodness. All right, here we go. New patrons are Danielle W. Thank you, Danielle. Michelle M. It's my name, Michelle. Mm -hmm. Yes. Grace G. Okay. Maybe for Grace Jones, but Jones is with a J. Huh. It's not Grace Jones. Grace G. Right. Cassie P. All righty. Carlin S. I almost said Carolyn, but it looks like it's Carlin. Thank you, Carlin. CJO. Thanks for all your contributions on Facebook, CJ. And Tori P. Very good. Thank you, Tori. You guys, seriously, this means the world to us. Every time I open up my mail and I see you have a new patron, it makes my day. And we can pay for Shelly's therapy bills. Yes, because those are (laughs) getting expensive. (laughs) Actually, um, the money that comes in to Patreon, we use to get better equipment. We use to afford plane tickets when we're going to Pride events um, to promote to meet our listeners well, um, and those festivals cost money too. They do. They cost uh, money to, to have booths. Yeah. They cost money to get there. And um, then we give away stuff. We give away stuff. So all yeah. the bracelets that you got and um, the stickers, and the, this is all paid for by money that we get through our patrons. So yep. thank you Put so much. Good use. And yes. we have the podcast edited. Yes. Thank by, you, Dan. By Dan at Extension Audio. A little shout out to Dan before we forgot. Also, just thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who signs up on Patreon. It just means so much to us. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. What is next, Shelly? I am so excited to pimp this pod. Oh, yeah. We got a pod to pimp. Yes, we do, Dan. Another Dan. Dan Ellis. Are we collecting Dans? We got a couple. Okay. I like some Dans. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. Wait a second. Cue music. Pimp your pod. All right, this pod we are going to pimp. Write this down, people. It's fantastic. It's called it's a good one. It's called Godless Revolution with a B, like rebel. Godless Revolution. Yes, we were guests, both of us guests on this podcast because most of the time 
for some reason, just everybody wants to talk to you, Shelly. Mm-hmm. I should be the one with my feelings hurt. I should be calling JR right now. Call him. <laughs> it's really going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so generally, Shelly, I guess because you are the ex Mormon mother of seven, blah, 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 blah. Heard mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so that's why you are the more popular guest. But. We were both guests on this podcast, and that was a lot of fun. That was so much fun. I actually um, posted a picture of us sitting at the booth. Mm-hmm. Very cool little room in the basement. Mm-hmm. These guys mm-hmm. seriously were so much fun. I feel like we've talked about this already before on a different podcast episode, but our episode that we were on with these guys is out now. It's going to be episode 252. Yes, it is Episode out. 252, Latter-day, Latter-day Lesbians. Lesbians. Such mm-hmm. a good time. We've listened to it since, and... I just crack up. These guys are so funny. Mm. So check it out. And if you like it, listen to all the rest of their episodes. They've been doing this for a few years now. Yeah, um, It's a lot of fun. I think they had six seasons, actually. Wow. I think we're, so. We're falling behind. Yeah, well, you know, we'll just have to keep keep at this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> I think I can. I think I can. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. And that's the pod we're pimping. Yeah. Thanks, guys. It was really fun being on your podcast. And uh, maybe you can come to the D.C. area and be on our podcast. Oh my gosh, sometime. that would be awesome. Mm-hmm. And uh, maybe the next time we're in Utah, we'll stop in again. I'm just going to go. I'm just going to show up and you are. knock on the door. We'll bring the pizza this time. Mm-hmm. Good idea. Yeah. Good idea. It was nice of them. <laughs> and we drank a bunch of their booze. It's true. Uh-huh. Oh, they had that um, espresso tequila. tequila. Yeah. That was that tasty. That was amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yep. All right. So what's next? Um, well, we have a choice. We could do a he said what or a foom pod. The he said what and the foom pod today are so broad and big that they will take up the entire rest of the time. So Okay. What would you like first, Mary? I don't know. We haven't heard from an asshat in a couple of days. How about a he said what? I like it, but wait. Okay, I'm waiting. Just you wait. I just remember that my friend Andrea, who I went to high school with back in the day, she works at a bank. Yeah. And she sent a message today. She just listened to the podcast where we talked about when one of our listeners found someone's temple recommend in the Lost and Found. Yeah. And you were like, what the heck is it even for? Why are they taking it to work? Anyway, she said that people have come into her bank and tried to use their temple recommend as a form of ID. <laughs> <laughs> you dumbasses. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> uh, awesome. Also, we talked last Those week. Those people should just not get loans. No, don't, don't give them money. <laughs> like, seriously, do not give them no. money. You'll never see it again. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Uh, Also, one more thing. Um, We talked about, I think it was last week, I read that thing about Adam on Diamond, which was the funniest thing in the world. The author of that, pretty sure, was Ted Gibbons, and he writes for the Sunday school section of LDS Living. (laughs) And as I was scrolling through some of his other things, he has basically given us endless content. (laughs) What a great assignment. To get the Sunday school section of the magazine. Yeah. Here, write a bunch of bullshit for the Sunday school lesson of LDS magazine. Uh, wah, this wah. doesn't work. You get obits. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's hear this thing. Okay. Oh, yeah. We got to do our our segment intro. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we haven't even done that yet. Which, he said what? Should we do it on three? Okay. Yes. Three, two, one. Wait, wait, wait. You said do it on three. So is it three, two, one, then go? No. You said do it on three, then you go one, two, three. <laughs> if you say do it on three and then say three, two, then I, we're going to say it on three. <laughs> Don't give me a bank loan. <laughs> Here's my temple recommend. Put that recommend back in your pocket, little lady. <laughs> Whatever's laminated. Give me something laminated. <laughs> and you got a shrinky dink machine around here. <laughs> shrinky dink machine. You know what's crazy? What? Want to hear something really weird about my childhood? Always. Because I'm really weird. Or I was. Because I'm completely normal now. Mm-hmm. So when I was young, and my parents let me do this kind of stuff, I would take packing peanuts and draw faces on them and then put them in the toaster oven, and they would shrinky-dink. They, it would work. In the toaster oven? Yep. It would oh, work. Oh, like the weird toaster oven that, that we have upstairs or like a toaster? <laughs> Not a toaster. A toaster oven. Oven. The gotcha. kind where you open the front door. <laughs> I think you have to be at least 70 to own a toaster oven these days <laughs> or be merry. <laughs> <laughs> Raise your hand if you have a toaster oven, people. No one's raising their hand. They all have toasters. <laughs> uh, okay, sure. Toaster's so much better. <laughs> Think of all the things you can put in there. Toast. Pop-tarts. <laughs> and Pop-tarts. And bagels, if it's wide enough. Mm-hmm. A knife, trying to dig things out. <laughs> That's never a great idea. <laughs> anyway, you can make shrinky dinks out of a lot of different things, evidently. Interesting. Well, if they're the right plastic type. We probably had, like, harmful plastic fumes wafting through the house. Explains a lot. 
Well, I also played with Mercury as a kid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> also explains a lot. Okay, but we, we digress. Okay. He, he said, said what? what? Today's He Said What, again, again, is brought to you by our good friend, homophobic asshat Dallin H. Oaks. Mm-hmm. I'm starting to really feel like I know this guy. <laughs> well, should we have him over? We should. Let's let's call him up. <laughs> so last week we read some stuff that he had said, and I was like, you know, but this was back in 1984. Maybe he's changed his mind some since then, but he hasn't apologized, so nobody knows. Mm-hmm. Yeah, homeboy has not changed his mind because I'm going to read for all of our listeners something that he just said on June 11th, 2019. A couple weeks ago. He's such a jackass. Okay. And there's so many horrible things to pick apart here. So he gave this devotional, which is like an address okay, uh, at BYU Hawaii back on June 11th. And he says, it's great to be here. And here, here's something that bothered me. He goes, it's a special privilege to be here with Elder Kim Clark. Kim is a guy. Elder Kim Clark and his wife, Susan. <laughs> <laughs> Wives don't get anything. They don't get uh-huh. like elder no, they get nothing. They get to be a wife. That's it. Well, we kind of went over that last week. We did. So we're just... not going to dig into it, but there's they're just another shining example of it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So here is how pompous Asshat Oaks is. Whenever I gave a lecture, I was conscious that I was singing a solo. But whenever I testified of the doctrine of the Church of Jesus Christ and of our Savior, I was always part of a duet. Because the Holy Ghost was there to testify to those in audience of the truth of the things I was saying. Oh, jeez. Okay, so, okay, first of all, that's a really douchey thing to say. Mm -hmm. Who says that? I'm I'm speaking in a duet, speaking in duet form. With the Holy Ghost. With the Holy Ghost. Well, well, you know, if you break out the Holy Ghost card that's backing you up, no matter Mm -hmm. what you say— what I'm about to say is correct. Yep. Because I got the Holy Ghost on my mm-hmm. side. You can convince anybody of anything. I know. And just I know. say, oh, but the Holy Ghost is confirming that right now. Mm-hmm. Another um, damaging way that these asshats brainwash their listeners. Yep. And their believers and everyone in the congregation. During the past few years, we have heard many concerns and read much publicity about youth anxiety. Oh, so he's going to talk about anxiety. Okay. Well, it's oh. good that you're finally addressing that there is such a thing as anxiety and depression. Thank you. However, He says, there are alarming increases in the amount of anxiety diagnoses among young Americans. Nationwide, there are large increases in the number of college students seeking counseling services. We have experienced these same increases in our church education system. So he's talking about seminary, young single adult. I can't think of the name of it. It'll come to me. If not, someone just message in and say what it's called, where you go to college and you go to young single adult it's not young teachings. men's and young women's? No, this is like adults, like College 18, level? 19, 20, yeah. Okay. A writer in the Atlantic Monthly said, it is no exaggeration to say that your generation is on the brink of the worst mental health crisis in decades. Huh. And she says it's largely because of smartphones. Okay. okay. Our Savior, Jesus Christ, wants his leaders to be helpful in preventing and treating these problems. All right? So mm-hmm. let's, what, what, are, what are these problems? Let's see. I don't know that smartphone's from the devil. Mm -hmm. First, it talks about whatever the uncertainty is about the causes of anxiety, we have the restored gospel of Jesus Christ. Understand that the most reliable prevention of anxiety in eternal terms is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, uh, in order to fix your anxiety, you just need to understand the gospel. All right. Bullshit. (laughs) We begin with personal faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He has called us His friends. He's promised to give us strength to overcome Okay. We rely on hope and assurance. Guys, this is all this is all voodoo makeup shit. You can't just get rid of your anxiety by learning the gospel. Well, and I think what happens is people get more depressed because they start to read scripture and then they think, I'm supposed to be feeling better. I'm praying more. I'm reading my scripture, mm-hmm. going to Bible studies or whatever I'm doing, and I'm still not feeling better. So there must be something wrong with me. Mm-hmm. Elder Neil A. Maxwell taught, without an understanding of the plan of salvation, including our pre-mortal existence and the judgment and the resurrection, trying to make sense of this life by itself would be like seeing only the second act of a three-act play. We must understand the first act, the pre-mortal life, in order to know how to make the best choices in the second act, the mortal life, which will determine what happens to us in the third act, post-mortal life. So now it's talking about, like, we need to understand where we came from, why we're here, where we're going— Okay, like that's going to fix my anxiety because you're telling me the things that I have to do to make it to the next place are horrible. So I'm I'm getting there. It's about to get worse. I'm okay. just sort of I'm just sort of painting. You're the laying picture. some groundwork. I'm laying work. some groundwork. 
there's great power in the doctrine of the restored gospel of Jesus Christ. Basically, Christ, Christ, Jesus, Jesus, the gospel, the gospel. Um, but it's all, he's all talking about Mormonism. Mm hmm. All yeah, right. You're because ready for the this? restored gospel is supposed to be the book of Mormon. Right? That's Mormonism. Yeah. Okay. All right. We live in stressful times. For some young people, the stresses are financial, loss of employment or home or financial security. For others, the stresses are associated with painful separations from those we love, such as caused by divorce or parents or other threats to personal security. We have also the challenge of living in a godless and increasingly amoral generation. Mm. Really? Mm -hmm. More and more publicized voices deny or doubt the existence of God. More and more support the idea that all authority and all rules of behavior are man-made and can be accepted or rejected as one chooses, each person being free to decide for himself or herself what is right and wrong. I like having freedom, actually. Yeah, I know. What What the hell happened to free agency? Now, like, they used to talk about agency, agency, you get to pick mm -hmm. and you get to choose. I mean, the choices suck. They were like, okay, the right choice is this and the wrong choice is that. But at least they kind of said you get to choose. But now he's talking like, uh, people out there just think they get to choose what's right and wrong. Uh-huh. Well, you, you do. Yeah. You get but to he's acting like yourself. that's a bad thing. Well, of course he's acting like that's a bad thing. You're supposed to, and in Mormonism, you're just supposed to take whatever the higher yep. ups are telling you. Well, he's about to tell us right now what it is that's causing anxiety. Well, I can't wait to hear it's it. It's so good. And okay. this, again, is from Dallin A. Jokes, Class A Homophobic Asshat. Along with these challenges and caused by them, we are controlled by a culture of evil mm. and personal wickedness in the world. This includes dishonesty. Okay. Pornography. Hmm. All right. Perversions. Could you be more specific? I don't fucking know. <laughs> the diminishing of marriage and childbearing. Oh, geez. So listen, if you're so not having more kids, kids, if you're not having kids, you're part of the wickedness in the world. Hmm. What the fuck? Do we need more kids in the world? I mean, I did my you more sure than did. my fair share. You Any sure of you guys did. who are feeling guilty for not having kids, I got you. Mm -hmm. I covered you. Okay, here's the great one. The increasing frequency and power of the culture and phenomenon of lesbian, gay, and transgender lifestyles and values. Nice. We're a phenomenon. We are a phenomenon. Being gay, transgender, lesbian. I mean, he separates it out for lesbian and gay. Thank you, I guess. But anything that's not <laughs> heterosexual marriage with children mm -hmm. is the culture of evil and yep. wickedness in the world. Yeah. Hey, Dallin H. Oaks, suck it. When I gave you kind of a slight pass for having said those really homophobic things back in 1984. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm taking back that slight pass. You were the same close-minded, cruel, mm -hmm. mean, homophobic asshole now as of June 11th. That you always were. As you always were. You have not changed. You have not grown. You haven't learned anything from the example of Jesus, be he fake or real. You haven't learned a damn thing from mm -hmm. that example. Yeah. And if there's any Mormons left listening, he is your next prophet. Yeah. He's next in line. Yep. Are you going to continue to follow someone with this much hate in their heart? Well, and I know that it's surprising to some people that he said that. And lots of people are up in arms about it on Facebook and whatever. I'm kind of not surprised at all that he's saying this stuff. How is anyone surprised that this is his reaction now? What would be different with, with this I, guy? I think that people, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think that people are still attending church and still hoping to believe, kind of just brush it off. Like, well, he was old. Well, this was a while ago. Well, things are moving in the right direction. They just said that that being gay was no longer... Um, considered apostasy. What a great step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Then he comes out and says this shit. Yeah. It's like, give an inch, take a yard. Uh -huh. Don't fall for it. Don't fall for the little nice things they sprinkle here and there. Their beliefs is that if you are gay, lesbian, transgender, if anything. If you're anything other than heterosexual married couple with kids. You are evil. Uh -huh. Make no mistake about it. That's what they think of you. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I don't love this idea of people not being able to make any sort of decisions for themselves and they have to be spoon fed from the pulpit and have mm -hmm. to everything that they hear from the bishops and prophets they have to take in and do exactly as you say. I don't love that. Once again, I think that your religion should be able to withhold some questioning. And if you come out on the other side thinking, you know what, I have I've looked at everything. I mean, I look I think that's what you and 
Brent started to do. Yeah. You started to question. You started to read the scriptures for yourself, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you came to one conclusion. Somebody else might come to a different conclusion. But at least they looked into it. At least they're not just going with whatever someone told them. Well, exactly. Can you think of any other thing in the world, aside from religion— That you're supposed to blindly accept. That you're supposed to blindly accept. Science, math, English— any history? Is there anything that you are just supposed to blindly accept? Is there anything that there isn't uh, like a hypothesis and a like a science experiment, whatever you want to call it, done on anything yeah. except for religion? Well, and you're allowed to have an opinion about things, mm-hmm. like sliding doors. You didn't like that movie. That, it sucked. Somebody else might like that, and movie. that's okay. If I did but like I'm not that movie, them, I wouldn't tell you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm not telling them that their decision to like it is the wrong decision and they're evil. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I thought it sucked. If you liked it, great. Tell me why you liked it. Well, when when you sit, put it that way, I, I can see people lining up to tell you their most vulnerable. But the, um, I'm not telling them they're going to go to hell that they're wicked for liking it. Oh, uh, I love Gwyneth Paltrow. Uh. And there was nothing against her. Just the movie sucked. <laughs> it was also like 1991. Two or three or whatever. You keep saying that. Yeah, it's a different time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very few movies can hold up. Yeah. Anyway, Dallin H. Jokes is giving us so much material during Pride I Month know. about homosexuality. He sucks. he sucks so bad. I know. And he's next in line, guys. Yeah, I feel bad for current Believing Mormons. And there are a few that's who still listen to our podcast. It's true. We actually ran into one at Target the other day. Uh-huh. And it was very interesting talking to her, I thought, and Mary, you thought this as well, because she still goes to church. But you can tell she's struggling because she doesn't really want to talk about it because she doesn't want to face it. Yeah. And she's even said, she she even said, I think they're getting it so wrong on yeah. the LGBTQ thing. She's she's fairly nuanced, I would she say. She is. And you know what I loved is <laughs> someone wrote in and they talked about how they said that they were a nuanced Mormon, but then realized what it meant to be a nuanced Mormon was their shelf had already broken. The pieces were already on the ground. They yeah. just hadn't examined the mess yet. Right. And for a lot of people, it's, you know, their families are going there, their extended families, their friends, it's their whole community, mm-hmm. and they don't want to necessarily give all that up. Mm-hmm. I, I get it. Mm-hmm. I get it. Because you went through that, you left the Mormon church, and it's kind of like, well, now what? That was my entire, you know, existence. That was how I identified. Everything about this was how I identified. I had to find an entire new group. Yeah. Lucky, luckily for me, I had a good friend at the time who was also sort of in and out and then eventually out of the church. And so we were able to do that together, which was absolutely helpful. Those of you who feel stuck and trapped and alone, there are ex-Mormon groups everywhere. Yeah, And not everyone in an ex-Mormon group is angry wanting to torch the church like we are. Um, There are many (laughs) who just don't want to talk about it, but they're ex-Mormon, so they understand. And that would be a good friend for you as well. So look, look around. Don't feel like there is no one out there that you can be friends with. You will never have a group again. That's not how it is. Yeah, and some people probably aren't full tithe payers. Mm-hmm. Uh, this person we saw at Target may or may not be, fall into that category. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, <laughs> I don't mm-hmm. want to give too much away <laughs> uh, because there are a lot of like, for lack of a better word, closeted, nuanced Mormons that are maybe on their way out, but mm-hmm. they don't want to be vocal about it. Right? They're not ready to face their families yet because it sucks. It's hard. Yeah, if you sign up on Patreon at the fifteen dollar tier level or above, I believe it is. We give you the opportunity to be a guest Mm -hmm. on the podcast, and we have someone who wants to, Mm -hmm. but she's afraid. Yeah. She's afraid, not quite ready yet, like just a little bit afraid of some potential backlash. And and we said, you know, we can change your name, uh, whatever you need. Yeah. Yeah. And so not quite sure how that's going to pan out, but I get it. It's like people can be well-known sometimes in the in the Mormon communities. Sure, yeah. And they don't want it to get out that they have either left or they're thinking about leaving or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I am glad that Brent and I left the church, and it wasn't that long after that we split up and moved to a different town. So I don't really run into people from my old ward because the, it is uncomfortable. Yeah. Shouldn't be, but it is because you know what they think about you. For sure. And that doesn't feel good. No, yeah. it doesn't. And mm-hmm. who needs all that? Yeah. Yeah. Nobody? No. Mm-hmm. Anyway, that's your he said what. Well. And uh, he's full of them. 
He is full that of them. Dallin. That Dallin. We need to have him over, <laughs> over for lesbian din din. Let's do it. Let's uh, make him dinner and put our lesbian germs all over it. You I like you? it. Okay. I like it. All right. Is it break time? It is. Okay. Let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. And we're back. Hey, hey, hey. Missed you. Uh, hi. So it, it's hard for me to ever want to do a foom pod again with you because last week's Adam on Diamond <laughs> was so incredible. I don't know if we can ever match that. You know, I'd still want to sort of dissect how Adam and Eve got to the United States, which, of course, wasn't the United States yet because it hadn't been discovered. I mean, there were Native people here that we know. Oh, wait. What? Someone wrote in and said they learned that because oh. of the floods, the flood, like, swept them. Oh, they just got taken over in the, taken, the flood? I, I get That's what they said. But it's all bullshit. Like, we get that, right? <laughs> Somebody else said it was aliens. Mm. The aliens from Kolob. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's believable. Yeah, I mean, obviously, before continental drift happened, we know that there were native people here, right? Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. then, kind of like the lemurs on Madagascar, mm, they got mm-hmm. stuck once it became an island. Yep. That's my best guess like of what it. happened, how we I got like natives it. here. But wasn't that uh, before Adam and Eve, potentially? Like, we're talking millions of years ago. Yeah, I don't know. That's what I'm thinking. I don't know the timeline. I don't know either. But chances are, Adam and Eve if they came to America, would have needed a boat. And from everything we know about like the pilgrims and the slave traders, that boat ride was rough, Mm -hmm. rough going. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of times people didn't make it. Mm -hmm. If they did get over, then they'd probably have to populate the East Coast somewhere because that's what you did. That's why we're heavily populated on the eastern side of the United States. True, true. And you probably are going to die of malaria yep. because of the mosquitoes. And without a bigger colony, they would have had to have an entourage to make it, to survive. Okay. And how would they have gotten over to Missouri without horses? Well, there were tapers. <laughs> tapers. <laughs> yeah, this is really far-fetched, everybody. Are you maybe thinking it might be fake? <laughs> May Possibly. Huh. Maybe. I'm just starting to think that it might be fake. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I gave it a lot of thought. Yeah. I really tried to think through how it would have been possible for them to make the journey over here. Were you trying to make it true? <laughs> I wanted to try to think rationally about it. <laughs> wait, of- wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Were you trying to use rationality when thinking of Mormon history things? Uh-huh. I sure was. Yeah, first mistake. Yeah, but, you know, I like to think of myself as a rational person. I, I don't get super caught up in emotions. I'm more thoughtful. I more think about things. Hmm. I guess in Myers-Briggs, I'd be, should we divulge our Myers-Briggs yeah, scores? Go. Do you know what yours is? Um, Yellow. <laughs> <laughs> is that not? I don't know. Yellow. <laughs> oh, wait, what's yours? I have... Initials oh. to describe my. <laughs> what test were you taking? I don't know. It was some color test. <laughs> and red was like type A personality. Did you have to take the test in crayon? No, no. But yellow. Finger paint. <laughs> but yellow was like the friendly entertainer party girl. Are you thinking of, what's that one that Ben and Diana talk about all the time? Nope. What is that test? Can't Anna, remember. Anna Nano. Anna, Anagram. Anagrams or Anna, something. Anna, 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 Anna. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, that's the one. Okay, so I am an ENTP, and the T stands for thinking mm, versus an F, T. which is feeling. Now, I wasn't super high on the thinking, meaning I do have some empathy, et cetera. Like, I can put myself in an empathetic situation. Mm-hmm. I was just kind of over the border of mm. T. But I like to be rational about stuff. I like to think through things consider possibilities before making decisions, et cetera. There have got to be people in the Mormon church that are like me. Mm -hmm. I'm not the only one who uses thought. But somehow they turn that off when it comes to follow the prophet. They turn off thinking parts of their brain and just follow. Yeah, clearly they must because they're not giving any rational thought to some of these things and how things could be possible, how Adam and Eve actually could have gotten to Missouri from the Middle East. Well, it was something to do with the flood. Mm, yeah, okay. <laughs> sure. Well, I, I'm a yellow. I'm, I'm thinking so. they were dead by the time the flood came along. I mean, let's be honest. Is Adam and Eve even a real thing? <laughs> like, If they were, Noah was their offspring by maybe like hundreds of years. Like, we don't know, know well, exactly Well, if there was the Adam frame. and Eve, Adam is actually Michael. Michael? From the preexistence. This is Mormon theology, by the way. Like, a, who's Michael? Like the angel? 
There's an angel Michael, I think. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Who's Michael? But he was Michael in, he- in the pre-existence. Michael, row your boat ashore. That's the Hallelujah. one. Hallelujah. Yep. <laughs> and then he became Adam and er- erased his memory. And then Eve what? was Can made. Like, men in black? Yes. <laughs> what do you mean raised his memory? So he was he was Michael, <laughs> then he was born. Actually he wasn't born because he was never a baby. He was just like woke up in the Garden of Eden, but God had erased his memory. Whoa. And he wakes up and he's like blah, 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 blah. and God's like, Adam, no no no. And Adam's like No 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 I, I'm like- alone or whatever. And man was not meant to be alone. Here, I'll take a rib from your side and make Eve to be your helpmate. Poof. Helpmate. Um, helpmate. Whatever. What's na na na? Is that part of the Adamic language? No, no, no. Uh huh. It's basically bullshit, 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 yabba da Now there's Eve, and that's where it all began. And he was really Michael in the pre existence. Yes. Although they never say who Eve was. Eve gets no street cred, none. It's like Adam, who was actually Michael, who helped form the universe. Huh. But Eve is just like got taken from Adam's side, and she, she was a big fat nobody. Yeah, she this, just, this yeah. might really be fake. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do we have a foom pod? Oh, do we have a foom pod? Okay. Q music. It's the fucked up Mormon phrase of the day. All right, Mary. Today's fucked up Mormon phrase of the day, and there are three of them. There are three words. Mm, this seems they wrong. all go together. Okay. And they are in order. Uh huh. Beehive, Maya Maid, and Laurel. My, like marmalade? <laughs> My, uh-huh. Mary maids? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Beehive and laurel, I mean, duh. Laurel is like uh, bay leaves, right? That's a, that's a laurel plant. It's a plant. Beehives are, well, beehives. Marmalade, I've never heard. <laughs> Remember we're talking Mormon shit. <laughs> Try Mormon, again. Mormonade. Beehive, Ooh, now in drink maid, form. Lor- <laughs> <laughs> Beehive, my maid, laurel. My am maid. Mm-hmm. Well, I have no idea what Maya maid is. It's a made-up Mormon word. Beehive and laurel sounds like actual things that could be in Utah when you get there. You, it's a land of flowing with just play the milk damn and <coughs> buzzer. Honey. You're so you're so off. All right, fine. Are you ready for this buzzer? This is the young women classes and symbols. Young women being from age twelve uh-uh. to seventeen. You ready for this? And we're going to compare it to what the boys get to be, just just so we're ready for this, just to get ourselves a little pissy. And what age is this? I'm about to tell you. So you're, when you're a beehive, this is age 12 and 13. This is what beehive means. Do you get to be a busy bee? Can I just read the damn thing? <laughs> <laughs> the beehive was a symbol of harmony, cooperation, and work for the early pioneers of the church. Beehive was also the first name by which young women were known. Beehives today learn to work together in cooperation and harmony as they strengthen their faith in Jesus Christ and prepare to stand for truth and righteousness. And like so trek aprons and stuff. Yes, this is a time to arise and shine forth. Mm. So you're 12 and 13. This is what your job is. Okay. Maya Maid is age 14 and 15. What does that even mean? The name Maya Maid refers historically to the Mutual Improvement Association, which adopted the emblem of the rose as a symbol of love, Faith and oh, purity. Oh, of course, of course, of course. Maya maids today learn about love, faith, oh, and purity. Of course, uh-huh. as they strengthen their testimony and accept and act upon the young women values. Well, and they have the word "maid" in it, like mm-hmm, "maiden." Mm-hmm, of course, is it M A I D? M A I D. Oh God, yeah. Uh-huh. And finally, when you're 16 and 17, you are referred to as a laurel. For centuries, the laurel wreath has been a crown woven from the leaves of the laurel tree. It is given to someone who finishes a significant achievement as a symbol of honor and accomplishment. Ready? Uh Laurels today are finishing their preparation to make and keep sacred covenants and receive the ordinances of the temple. You know what that means? Marriage. Temple marriage. So ages 16 and 17 are finishing their preparation to make and keep sacred covenants and receive the ordinances of the temple. Wow. How nice 16 for them. 16 and 17. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you don't get to go through the temple unless you're going to serve a mission or you're going to get married. Really? Or you're like older and you, you decide you want to go to the temple. You can't just turn 18 as a woman in the church and say, yeah, I'm not serving a mission. I'm not getting married anytime soon, but I do really want to go through the temple. They won't let you? No. And if you don't get into the temple, you don't get to go to heaven, right? Isn't that- yeah, exactly. You can't be saved without this temple thing. Correct. Now- I'm confused about that because it seems like there are a, a number of Mormons that have weren't married in the temple. Mm-hmm. They're still believing Mormons. Mm-hmm. 
Did they not have a temple recommend? No, they do, but they probably are so old that they've allowed them to go through. The leadership has allowed them to go through the temple. Or they served a mission, so they were able to go through the temple right before their mission. And they are promised that God will make it all okay in the afterlife, meaning they will be sealed to someone of God's choosing in the afterlife. Married. So you have to be married. Yeah, you don't get to be single. (laughs) No, 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 no. Not an option. God. So there's the women. Okay. Uh-huh. Beehives, my mom, maids, laurels. Now let's maid. compare these to the ironic priesthood holders, which are the boys. How ironic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which are deacons, uh-huh. teachers, mm-hmm. and priests. Those are those are the equivalent to beehive, my maid, laurel, but there's nothing equal about them. So let's mm-hmm. talk about this. This is coming from the youth manual. Okay. okay? This is for the boys. You have been ordained to the Aaronic Priesthood. What are you supposed to do now? Now, keep in mind that I just read the information for what beehive my maid and laurel means, but this is what they're going to tell you about the Aaronic Priesthood holders. Okay. You may be a brand new deacon, newly ordained last Sunday, or a teacher helping prepare the sacrament each week, or you may be a well-seasoned priest, wise in the ways of service projects and in guiding the young teachers and deacons in their new responsibilities. But all priesthood holders have a common call from the Lord. From the Lord. Yeah. Did did girls get called from the Lord? Uh, No, they were just preparing to get married in the temple. Remember? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let every man learn his duty and act in the office in which he is appointed in all diligence. Office. The girls don't get an office. (laughs) They're like, oh, prepare for marriage. I'm a little beehive. Mm -hmm. But where can you go to learn about this duty? The first place you should look is the scriptures. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Another great resource is the booklet, Fulfilling My Duty to God, for Aaronic Priesthood Holders. This person likes to say duty mm-hmm. a lot. All right, here we go. Here's what a deacon is all about. Let's hear now, it. remember, compare it to what a beehive was all okay. about. A deacon sets a good example for fellow quorum members and the other church members. He lives a righteous life and remains worthy to exercise the priesthood. He passes the sacrament. Remember last week I talked about how mm-hmm. I was I felt so bummed that I didn't get to pass the sacrament. Yep, yep. This is one of the most sacred duties of a deacon. As a deacon performs his duty, he is a representative of the Lord. Wow. The girls they, don't get to represent shit. They don't get to represent the Lord? No. Oh, he should shucks. be worthy to give the emblems of the sacrament to the members of the church. He should dress and act in a way that will reflect the sacred nature of the sacrament. He should wear a white shirt. A white shirt. Is that where it starts? Right there. Okay. A deacon serves as a standing minister appointed to watch over the church. Wow. They're telling 12-year-old boys. Imagine you're in a class and they're talking to the boys and saying all these things about them, a 12-year-old boy, and the 12-year-old girl sitting there thinking, man, I don't get shit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm nothing. I am basically here to prepare to get married to one of these boys. Yep. That's it. That's all I'm here for. So I can birth their children. Yep. He assists the bishop in administering temporal things. This responsibility may include gathering fast offerings, caring for the poor and needy, caring for the meeting house ground. By the way, the girls don't get to assist the bishop in anything. Oh, The bishop is the head of the ward, and the girls don't even interact unless they're going in there to be questioned about their sexual thoughts. Yeah. I mean, I think Catholicism is similar, honestly. Well, it sucks. In the treatment of boys and girls. Yeah. Well, Mm -hmm. All right, next one's teachers. Okay, so these are for 14 and 15-year-old boys. A teacher has all the responsibilities of a deacon. He also has the following responsibility. He prepares the sacrament. It is the responsibility of the teachers to always have the sacrament ready for sacrament meeting. You mean the shitty bread and water? Yeah, the shitty bread and water that they make um, members of the ward bring because this rich-ass church is too damn cheap to buy bread for their sacrament meetings. (laughs) Members often do not realize that it's the teachers who prepare the sacrament, but the service is performed Formed, nevertheless, and the Lord is pleased mm. because it is a true service. Seriously? Oh, you boys and the Lord, you guys are buddies. Do the Mira maids or Maya maids, what are they called again? Maya maids. Maya maids. Yeah. Are they blessed by the Lord or anything? Let me see what they say. Let me, let me, let me go back. Are they in service to the Lord? Those Maya no, maids? No, they're basically working on uh, learning about love, faith, and purity as they strengthen their testimonies. Okay. They actually don't say the Lord in... Oh, they say Jesus Christ right there in the very beginning. Where the 12 and 13-year-olds. As they prepare to stand for truth and righteousness. Okay. Let's say it one time. All right. The priests. Um, This is 16 and 17-year-old boys. A priest has all the responsibilities of a deacon and a teacher. He also has the following. He officiates at the sacrament table. 
the honor of administering the sacrament is given to the priests who offer the sacramental prayer. Hmm. A wow. priest should be familiar with a sacramental prayer, dress appropriately, and his hands washed. <laughs> Above all, priests should be worthy to perform the sacred ordinance as the Savior's representative. In the bathroom, there's a sign that says all priests must, must wash, wash hands wash before returning to work. Yeah. <laughs> um, do the girls ever get to be a representative of the Savior? Never. I, yeah. No. Never. Mm-hmm, People mm-hmm. who are listening, who are still taking your kids to church, and you have children, I want you to think about this, about the message that your girls are getting, and that your boys are getting, for that matter. Yeah. The boys have to behave in a certain way to be Christ's representative. They also are thinking how badass they are, that they get to do this. Right. And the girls are like, oh, sucks that I'm a girl. Well, yeah, it's a message to boys and girls that boys are better, mm-hmm. I think. For sure. That was the message that I got. Mm -hmm. Uh, Another duty of priests is to baptize when authorized by the bishop or branch president. They get to baptize people. That's crazy. 16 year old kid. That would be um, Gavin, my Gavin, baptizing people. Well, now he's older than that. But yeah. It's true. He's 17. Is he? Yes. (laughs) Sorry. Way to go, Mom. I know, I know. Baptism by the proper authority is one of the most important and sacred ordinances of the church. You know, in in mainstream churches, I was having this discussion with my sister last night, priests and and pastors have to go to theological seminary, Mm -hmm. and a lot of times they have to have a master's of divinity, like a master's degree. You can't just be a plumber or whatever and run the church. That just isn't how it goes. Unless you're in a Mormon church. Unless you're a Mormon. If you're a Mormon, you can be freaking 16 years old and yeah. performing the most important and sacred ordinance. Right, right. Well, it doesn't make any sense. I know. It's ridiculous. Here's a little more. The priest's duty is to preach, teach, expound, and exhort. Exhort? Meaning a 16, 17-year-old boy, their duty is to exhort, is to warn people, tell them that they're off the path. Wow. Way to give these little asshat 16 and 17-year-olds a big head and power to be assholes to people. Well, you know what's funny about that is— hmm. We have a friend who shall remain nameless, whose oldest boy mm-hmm. is a little full of himself. He takes that duty really seriously. Yes, he's always telling his younger sister. Uh huh. He you- t- he tells his mother. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. He admonishes his mother when he thinks she strays from the path. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he's he been feels- told that's his yep. that's his duty that's his as duty. a priest. Yep. He's entitled God. to do so. A priest does this as he fulfills his responsibility to be a home teacher and visit his assigned families. And in order to teach the principles of the gospel, of course, he must first learn what they are. This responsibility will be a great help as he prepares to serve a full-time mission. No pressure, kid. Uh You better go on a mission. Yeah. Well, that is the expectation. Mm -hmm. For sure. Cool. So there's that section. Talks about it all. Oh, wait. It talks about young women in the priesthood. Oh, okay. Even though the authority of the priesthood is bestowed only on worthy male members of the church, the blessings of the priesthood are available to everyone. Uh And these blessings are the same for men and women, girls and boys, rich and poor. All of God's children have the privilege of receiving the same saving ordinance of the priesthood. As chosen daughters of God, all young women who have been baptized have also received the gift of the Holy Ghost. They have the right to seek and be blessed by spiritual gifts, such as the gifts of tongues, prophecy, blah, blah, blah. Tongues. As young women live righteous lives and strive to serve others by receiving and developing these gifts of the Spirit, their example for good will be a strong influence on the young men around them. Oh, no pressure, girls. You better set a good example for the boys. Mm -hmm. Oh, here, it talks about how. How can young women help young men be worthy priesthood holders? One young man answered, I think two of the biggest things they do are to dress modestly and be kind to everyone. The modest dress helps me keep my thoughts in check, and I can actually look at them while talking. Oh, eyes up here, boys. Are you eyes up here. fucking <laughs> kidding me? So this whole section about oh the priesthood God. talks about how the 12 through 17-year-old boys are given all this responsibility, and they get to basically talk and act for God. Yeah. And, oh, and girls dress modestly so the boys don't, you know, get aroused while they're trying to, to right. be God's servant. Right, right, right. Don't be a stumbling block. God, I yeah. hate it. I oh, hate yeah. it. Uh-huh. If anyone is listening who still takes your kids to church, please understand these are the lessons that they are learning. Mm-hmm. So either fucking deprogram them every time they come home or just stop taking them. It's not 
good. It's not good yeah. for self esteem. It's pretty damaging stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm uh, a little angry today. I'm yeah, like, this kind of stuff really fires me up. I know. We kind of go back and forth with the rage. You and I. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You have the mantle of rage today. Yep. It's okay. Um. So this book, Educated, that we're reading, and I don't want to spoil it, but there is this one section where she's young and she wants to do other stuff besides work on their homestead thing yep. they got going on. So she gets into this dance lessons and there's a recital coming up and the uh, standard leotard and dance shoes or whatever are deemed too immodest for her. So the, By her dad. Right. Well, she just she didn't even know, like the dad didn't even know yet that she was part of this. She just knew it would be too immodest. Like he would think it was too immodest mm-hmm. for her. So the dance teacher agreed to wear like some oversized sweatshirt over the whole thing with some emblem that they put on it. Yeah, got all the kids to wear it. Got all the kids to wear it, even though none of the other girls wanted to wear it. Right. Like anybody else that was performing in this dance recital would not have to wear like some flash dance oversized Mm -hmm. sweatshirt thing. Right. So she didn't expect her dad to come to the recital, and he does anyway. And he's there looking judgy at her the entire time. So she doesn't do any of the parts of the routine that would maybe like lift the sweatshirt up a little bit over her knees. For real. This is for real. God. And or bend over in a way that he wouldn't approve of. So she basically didn't do any of the choreography or didn't do a lot of it. Right. And embarrassed the rest of the class because she was so worried about what her father that he would think she was immodest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In an oversized sweatshirt. God. This is a, such a good book, you guys. Yeah. Educated. You need to read it. Highly recommend it. Anyway, so that is your phone pod, wow. and you got it wrong, and the it's truth just, of it was really? actually, once again, <laughs> much worse than what you thought it was. Well, you know, there's just really no telling what's, what some of this stuff is. The thing from last week about Adam Mondai, what is it? Adam, Adam Mondai Amen. Would Amen. you please learn the, the uh-huh. Adamic language? Yeah, Thank let me, you. oh, that's part of the Adamic language. It is. Okay, is there a class I can take on the mm, Adamic language? Maybe if you had the priesthood, they'd just come maybe to Maybe on Rosetta Stone, I can learn <laughs> the Adamic uh-uh, language. I'm going to look it up. <laughs> it's right but, next to Arabic. Yeah, you know, I um, didn't watch the South Park episodes dedicated to Mormonism, which I think think would have been helpful because I think they go over some of this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm really in the dark. Maybe it's better than I didn't. So everything seems brand new when you read this stuff to me. Crazy. Might be fake, you guys. Just consider <laughs> oh, for that. for sure it's fake. Just consider Not only that. is it fake, it's harmful. If it was just fake and silly, I'd be yeah. like, whatever, idiots. But mm-hmm. it's fake and harmful. So I am exhorting you listeners mm-hmm. to get your kids out of this mess. Yeah. There you go. It's damaging. Yes, it is. Speaking of kids, I oh. just I need to share some <laughs> Philip. He just is such a bright light in my life. I think we wanted to talk about it the last couple weeks because yeah. I've been referencing like the sorting hat mm-hmm. and Should the sorcerer's stone and the port key. Yeah, let's talk about that story. Yeah, I'm starting to get quite a little list of Philip uh, stories here. On I know. My and paper. the last time you tried to videotape him, he was on to you. Yeah, he's starting to learn that he's a little t- uh, topic of my filming. Yeah, I kind of want to do like a part of the channel dedicated to Philip. I know. I should have been interviewing this morning because I had to take him to basketball camp, and he was like, "I don't want to go." I'm going to have an unlucky day. I have too many bug bites to play basketball. <laughs> I'm like, dude, seriously, stop. I was in no mood. He's big on this lucky days versus unlucky days. Mm-hmm. I was trying to explain to him that he can have whatever day he wants. If oh, he yeah. wants to have an unlucky day, he's going to have an unlucky day. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. I think he gets nervous about new things, and this mm-hmm. is, he's going to do a new thing, and so he kind of has to down it like it's going to be unlucky, it's going to be horrible. Um, it's you know, never as bad as he thinks in his head. I, I think. can't think about lucky versus unlucky with Without hearing the words of my mother's best friend when we were growing up, anytime anybody said anything about luck, like, Mm -hmm. good luck, she'd say, there's no such thing as luck in the Christian life. Like, every time. (laughs) I'm going to start saying that to Philip when he says, it's an unlucky day. (laughs) Blow his mind. You couldn't even say good luck. And she would say that. Oh, like Christians can be so fun. Yeah, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We weren't allowed to watch soap operas growing up. And um and I got into General Hospital for some reason. Oh, you rebel, Luke and Laura yep, thing. Yep, yep. Yeah, I'm old guys. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we'd go over to my friend's house and watch it. And one time she slipped and said something about GH. And my mother said, "What's GH?" And she said, "Oh, good housekeeping." <laughs> 
the magazines? <laughs> okay. Like, that's better than General Hospital. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's funny. More sanctioned. Uh-huh. That's yeah. true. All right. The Philip story for the day. Let's this hear it. was a few weeks ago. And I was standing outside with him, outside of his school. And yeah. other kids were coming out. We were just kind of chit-chatting. And this little girl walked behind him with her grandma. And I heard her say, Grandma, I found a new book series that I love. And the grandma says, oh, what is it? And the girl said, it's Harry Potter. <laughs> and then Philip goes, Harry Potter sucks. <laughs> He's like my worst enemy. <laughs> <laughs> what did Harry Potter ever do to him? <laughs> Well, we get to the bottom of it later, but it was just so funny that he just blurted that out, right? As this little girl, cute little girl, is telling her grandma that Harry, the Harry Potter series is mm-hmm. so great. And he just says, like, Harry Potter sucks. I know. So I found out later that there's two gangs at his school. Gangs? Mm-hmm. How old is he? He's in second grade. When you're a jet, you're a jet all the way from your first cigarette to your last dying day. I'm doing jazz hands. Did you hands. just do jazz hands? I just did oh, jazz God. hands. Oh, <laughs> God. <sighs> uh-huh. All right. Tell me about his gang. Okay. There's two gangs in school. One are called the Harry Potters. <laughs> this is not the gang that Philip is in, actually. And the other gang is called the Bobs. And the Philip Bobs? is in the Bobs game. They have t-shirts and everything. What have you seen Bobs? him wear his Bob t-shirt? No. I don't uh-huh. know who named it. But anyway. I don't even understand what that means. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. But it is, it is the two the two second grade gangs at Cunningham Park <laughs> Elementary School. It's the Harry Potters and the Bobs. And the Bobs. And Philip's the Bobs gang. And the Harry Potter gang sucks. Uh-huh. And they're like his worst enemy. His worst enemy. And then you were asking Philip, you were like, Philip, why do you hate Harry Potter so much? Because you don't understand that they were gangs, right? Uh-huh. And he said, there are four reasons. Mm-hmm. Number one, they're my worst enemy. They're, okay. they're, they're mean. They're Number mean? one, they're mean. Okay. Number two... Glasses. I know, and I took personal offense to that one. <laughs> you wear glasses. Uh-huh. I tried to question him about it, and he got really like fidgety and uncomfortable. I was like, "What's wrong with glasses?" And he was like, "Gotta go, mm-hmm, squirrel." Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> number three was they're fake. No, number three was <laughs> that's Mormonism. It's true. Number three was Harry Potter's aren't even real. Something along those lines. Oh, it's made. Oh, it's up. all about yeah. It's all number made three. Up. It's all made up. Just like Mormonism. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then number four again was. They suck. They suck. Yeah. yeah. So they suck twice. Uh-huh. Yeah. And that was they one suck. of the reasons why they suck is that they suck. Mm-hmm. So, so there they, you go. That's so suck perfect. it. <laughs> <laughs> suck it, Harry Potters. <laughs> so Harry Potters suck and they are Philip's worst enemy. So there you go. How do second, second grade? Mm-hmm. How do you get a gang? Well, I don't know, but he came home one day and he had a white T-shirt on that apparently one of his buddies brought a bunch of white T-shirts to school in a Sharpie and they made gang shirts. <laughs> and it said the Bobs. And I'll, oh, you know what? I'll go over and take a picture of this gang shirt in second grade. <laughs> God. Interesting. Yeah. So there you go. Okay. So we are going to wrap this one up. Mm -hmm. Just a note, we have been omitting, unfortunately, some listener letters as of late, and that is unfortunate, and we are going to remedy this situation Mm -hmm. because we are now going to start doing a midweek letter podcast. Yes. We are going to do that. We are. We haven't come up with the name of it yet. Maybe LDL Letters or something. Oh, I like that. We can have a little, little jingle. Um, Could it be a rap? When you're a jet, you're Ugh, a jet all no, the way. No, no. <laughs> That's all that I got from, right okay, now. Well. Nope. Can Sorry, I play my West mouth West story? <laughs> <laughs> West Side Story music. I don't know. It. It's no, you don't musical. like musicals. Don't, you don't like musicals. I like Book of Mormon. Well, there you go. It's a start. Okay, it's a start. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's wrap this up. We got stuff to do today. Okay, we'll put a bow on it, kids. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's going to do it for this week. Remember, steer clear of cults. Why, Shelly? Because they're no joke. They are no joke. Talk Mm -hmm. to you later, everybody. Bye-bye.